You know, sometimes when I play, I use two keyboards and I switch off on guitar. And it's a lot of fun, but there's a problem if you're going into a studio. What happens is, you get one of today's amps. Now, like, I have a Mustang 4 here. And the big problem is, it has one input. And I have three instruments. So how do I take care of this? Well, I could use one of those mixers, like a, a Behringer mixer or a PV mixer or whatever. But I, I just don't... I want something simple because I, all I'm trying to do is combine these three signals. So this is what I use. So this is what I did. I built this simple little three-channel passive audio mixer. It has an output and three inputs so I can put all three instruments in and two of the instruments have a volume control. You don't really need it but I have it anyway just in case they're not quite balanced. So I can play my top keyboard or I can play my bottom keyboard right through my amp with the single input. And in addition to that is the case. This is what I call a clamshell case. It has a top that's sort of like a U, a long U, and a bottom which is sort of like a short U. And one just fits over the other and goes together with a screw on either side. It's a nice way of making a case for little projects. I'm going to show you how to make that. And I'm going to show you how to build this three-channel passive audio mixer. So let's get going. Here are the case parts for the mixer. These five pieces form the top and these three pieces form the base. And here are the dimensions. To start gluing up the top, I'm going to take the underside and measure 1 8 inch from e either end and then 3 8 inch from the one end over there. Put the glue on the 2 inch long by half inch square piece. Spread it out with my trusty finger and glue. I do the same with the other half inch by half inch piece clamp it and then I'll wait for that to dry. I'm going to attach the base pieces with a few number six by one half inch sheet metal screws. I take the base and I take the front with the holes towards the right and I position position like this and flush with the side. I drill a 3 32nd inch pilot hole just a little bit in and then screw in the piece. Now that I've done the front, turn it around and place the back panel on with the holes farthest away. And that completes the base of the case. Now that the glue has set, we can take off these clamps and then glue these sides on like this with the hole towards the bottom. So I'll just put a little glue on this one here spread it around. You can also put some screw glue on the top piece here and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. The top is dry. This is what it looks like. I've taken the bottom and I've actually painted it already and put it back together. 
off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the top and slide it onto the bottom, just like that. You notice that it overlaps a little bit on the bottom. Then I'm going to drill two holes, one on either side, serves as pilots for the screws. And now we have our case, nice little case with a little overlap on either side, and the spaces for everything. So I'll paint this up, and then we'll get ready to do the electronics inside. I've mounted the four phono jacks, input one, two, three, and the output, and I've mounted the two 10K potentiometers. These will be the volume controls for input one, two and three. I've also attached the green wire to the ground of each one of the four phono jacks and the rightmost lug of the two 10K potentiometers. And finally, I've attached a lead wire to the leftmost lug of both of the potentiometers. And I'm going to connect those two leads to the remaining connections on jacks input two and three. So let me do that right now. So, I've attached this leftmost lug to the rightmost lug on this jack and this leftmost lug of this pot to the rightmost jack lug on this jack. I've also soldered one end of three 10K resistors together. And I'm going to connect those to the rightmost lug of the output jack. Now, I'm going to attach one of those 10K resistors to the center lug of this 10K pot. I've also positioned a t one of the 10K resistors on the center lug of this pot. I'm just going to solder it, put it in place. There we go. Now the final connection is to take the remaining 10K resistor and connect it to the remaining lug on channel 1. However, it doesn't go over far enough, so I'm going to use a little jumper. And that completes all of the electrical connections for the mixer. So let's put it together and give it a try. So as you can see, I've made a template and I put it on the front and on the back so it identifies the inputs, the outputs, and the volume controls. So let's connect it all together and try it out. So I have channel 1 going to the output of the top keyboard channel 2 going to the output of the bottom keyboard and channel 3 going to the guitar and the output going to the Fender Mustang 4. Okay. That's channel 1. It doesn't have a volume control, but I, of course, have to control it with the volume control on the keyboard. This is...
Looks like everything works out real nice. 